era of uh, intense collaboration, IBP offers a platform for cooperation, coordination, and communication among partners. While there are so many other agencies working for the promotion of family planning, the difference with IBP is that the IBP meetings involve a number of stakeholders and partners who are actively involved in sharing experiences, sharing best practices, and also sharing the lessons learned of successes and failures. This is what makes these meetings unique. The one feature that stands out in these meetings is the proactive involvement of all partners, of all participants. No one is ever not alert. Everyone is proactive and alert. There's tremendous exchange of uh, information, of experiences, which help us move forward in our programming. My collaboration with IBP has been long. I first interacted with IPP Secretariat in 2003 when I was based in Jordan, Amman, in the regional of UNFP regional office there. And I found I was very impressed by the passion that Maggie Ashra Patel earlier brought and which is being now continued by the IBP Secretariat even today. So what I intend to do is I have been using the IBP material, the IBP learnings for promoting advocacy, evidence-based advocacy, and also for generating evidence and for sharing experiences with country offices, UNFPA country offices, with stakeholders and partners in many countries of the region. I think IVP is doing a great job in promoting family planning and reproductive and sexual and reproductive health and rights in general. Thank you. So introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Dr. Sarah Onyango. I work with IPPF as the Africa, as the region. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't even know what I do. My name is Dr. Sarah Onyango. I work with IPPF as a technical director. My name is Dr. Sarah Onyango. I'm the technical director at uh, IPPF Central Office in London. IBP is an essential part of IPPF's work. IPPF was one of the founding members of IBP. And so for the last, since uh, IBP was founded, we have worked together in uh, using the platform that it provides to disseminate, to share information, and to learn from each other. Okay, so we need to do it again with how IBP contribute to you. That's all right. Yeah, IBP is an essential IBP is an essential part of IPPF's work. IPPF was one of the founding organizations for IBP. So throughout the years, we have engaged through IBP to share information, to network, and to learn from other organizations. Uh, what makes IBP meetings different and unique from the other global and regional meetings? One of the uniqueness of IBP meetings is that it brings together organizations sharing actually how they, they translate uh, research and theory into practice. So it's, it's more hands-on, it's practical, it's how to do it and how to move from, from kind of research to scale. How will you continue to participate in IBP, IBP in your future? Uh, as we all know, IPPF is the current chair of IBP. So for the next two years, we see ourselves providing a leading role in IBP's work, uh, working with all the stakeholders to set uh, the agenda for IBP. Uh, and following that, uh, we are a network of many organizations. 
So we look to using the opportunities in IBP to share our, pr our best practices, but also to disseminate some of the learnings coming out of IBP. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Esther Tarir, and I'm from the Public Health Institute in Oakland, California, United States. How IBP contributes to your work? IBP gives the Public Health Institute access to many different partners around the world that are working on family planning to increase access to family planning. And at PHI, we particularly work with young people, so we work with um, different partners of IBP to see how we can collaborate to increase young people involvement in sexual and reproductive health, um, have more policies and more access for young people to contraceptives, to comprehensive sexuality education. So the IBP platform gives us the most recent evidence, strategies, and partners to work to advance family planning around the world. What makes IDP meetings different and unique from the other global and regional meetings that you have attended? IBP meetings are different than many other regional meetings because they bring together people from different sectors. So you have the international NGOs, the local NGOs, government, policy makers, donors. And it's really talking about what works, what are some of the best practices, what doesn't work, and how can we collectively pool our resources and our efforts to try and create change, not working in silos, um, each in our own little individual programs, but actually trying to collaborate. Uh, IBP meetings are also often um, interactive with opportunities for discussion, for dialogue, and for asking many of the difficult questions. How will you continue to participate in IBP in your future work? So Public Health Institute was the chair of IBP for the last two years, and I acted as chair representing PHI. So moving forward, we're, we've turned the chair role over to IPPF, um, but now we're continuing to act as chair of the Adolescent Task Force and co-chair of the Latin American uh, and Caribbean Task Force of IBP. So we will continue to be engaged in bringing together the partners that specifically work in Latin America and that work on youth uh, to make sure that the IBP practices, the WHO guidelines and everything um, are shared with those partners. Yeah, that's it, okay. Hi, uh, I'm Surbhi from Love Matters India. Uh, Abhishek from Love Matters India. Tanvi from Love Matters India. And we at Love Matters, uh, we are an online platform that talks to young people about love, sex, and relationships. So how IBP contributes to your work? Um, I think this is perhaps our first meeting uh, that we are at, uh, organized by IBP, and it's been such an um, honor and an opportunity for us to really meet uh, diverse uh, groups of people and organizations who are working um, on family planning issues. Um, and I think we have had so much to learn um, throughout this day today. Um, so it's, it's been really amazing. And as discuss how partnership plays a very important role. Okay. So as discussed, partnership play a very important role and we can see so many partners and this is really good in terms of achieving any sustainable development goal. Even goal number 17 mentioned that we should focus on the partnership. So I think this is a good platform to start with this. Collaboration. Yeah. What makes IBP meetings different and unique from other global and major meetings that we have attended? Um, I think something that we participated in this afternoon was the, the Knowledge Cafe um, or the Information Bazaar, uh, which I think was a really cool way to learn about other organizations and the work that other organizations are doing. Um, it was very interactive. It was a lot of fun for us. Um, and I think we really got a chance to hear from other people instead of like just doing a PowerPoint slide. So I think the format of the meetings has been uh, really amazing. Yeah. You can talk to each other if you want. Yeah. Uh, how will you continue to participate in IBP in your future? 
Um, so it started with today and uh, while at the Knowledge Cafe we were able to share some of the best practices that we impl implement at Love Matters India with other organizations and also we'll be able to partner with other organizations present here and we're hoping that we'll be able to scale up the work that we do and take it to a bigger level. So if you want to discuss anything about IDP, you can or the questions are okay. <laughs> no, I think the other point is also like just the learnings that we have had from other organizations. It's been amazing. Um, and I think we have also got to know a lot about IBP because I think we are newer to this space. Um, so it's been amazing to learn about the different resources they offer, the different partnerships and collaborations they offer. So I think that's all been a really, really amazing uh, information for us to have. And I think those resources will be really helpful for us as well in terms of our future work and reaching out to more and more people. Yep. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. called the Mahadalit population, uh, which, uh, where we are reaching out to them with uh, messages and uh, services. So that's primarily about Pathfinder, and I'm very glad to be standing before you and uh, talking to you. It's been a privilege. Thank you. Yes, I'm actually supposed to be introducing a video to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's stories like uh, Pinkies that uh, make us determined to. More than my age, I'm so sorry if I made you feel old. <laughs> that was not the intention. <laughs>
So, so Catherine is Pathfinder's uh, senior advisor for adolescent and youth uh, sexual and reproductive health. And she's also worked from the donor side as well as from the implementation side. And she's the one who's got 30 years of experience on the field. So here's for Catherine. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> thank you. So thanks for joining us tonight um, at IBP and at this reception, which is being sponsored by the Momentum Project. Um, and the Momentum Project is a project that was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, because of the really outstanding results that we got under the Prashar Project, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was very interested in Pathfinder compiling evidence around the Prashar Program um, and other programs that have done similar work to really um, come up with a resource where, sort of a one-stop shop where people could get um, resources for programming for first-time parents and young married women. So for... So sorry. <laughs> this is what we get when we're all jet lagged, right? I can't find the mouse. Tech, tech support? Oh, there we go. Got it. So for a lot of years, there have been a lot of programmatic. I got it. Yeah, OK. So I want to go down, but no, see it. No, I want to, I want to get that. So for many years, there have been a lot of programmatic and policy efforts to end early in child marriage, but governments and donors and programs really didn't pay a lot of specific attention to young women once they were married or had a child. But in the last few years, um, there's been a lot of global interest around reaching these first-time parents and young married women. Um, and it's really ramped up um, with increasing recognition that a significant amount of sexual activity and childbearing occurs in marriage. And, you know, and as we heard from Dr. Sichter this morning, in a country like India, it's very challenging to talk to unmarried adolescents about sexual and reproductive health. Um, so we feel that um, the donors and global programs that are increasingly looking at this population of, of adolescents and young people, um, Pathfinder India and Pathfinder International have really been leaders in this effort, um, beginning with the Prashar Project, which Matthew mentioned briefly um, today. And more recently, we've been replicating that approach in Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Tanzania, where early marriage and early childbearing are uh, also very common. So I'm especially pleased to talk to you about this, briefly about this toolkit that Pathfinder has developed for contraceptive programming with this married adolescent, youth, and first-time parent population. So shout out to our K4H colleagues. Um, these healthcare professionals around the world use toolkits that have been developed by the K4H project to access the information that they need to develop policies, design programs, and make healthcare decisions based on evidence. And so, um, as Angela said earlier today, the K4H project um, reviews and maintains these toolkits, but the fact is, is most of these toolkits are authored by external organizations, and I'm challenged to get the mouse. So why is this mouse, sorry. Where's, the, where's my tech guy? Where'd he go? I can't get the mouse. I just want to get scroll down to the next part of that. Not the next page, just the rest of that paragraph. Not, yeah, I just want the rest of this. <laughs> So can I scroll down? I just want that. This is your task. Just a minute. Hold it. This. So, yeah, so the next, okay, here we go. Okay. 
Okay. So the toolkits that K4H develops are organized by programmatic topic and country-specific collections. So you see here there, there's a practical online collection of uh, public health resources maintained by Johns Hopkins uh, Center for Communication Programs, um, funded by USAID's Office of Population and Reproductive Health. There's 75 plus toolkits um, online addressing topics such as family planning, reproductive health, HIV AIDS, a whole range of topics. So Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation gave us money um, to develop a toolkit on first-time parents and young married adolescents, which would be housed on the K4H platform. So the grant from the Gates Foundation allowed us to go out and really scour our own organization, as well as our partners um, and um, implementing, implementing partners and various organizations around the world that were doing work on uh, adolescent, first-time parents and young married adolescents. So we were able to go out and find these materials and then compile and review them um, against certain criteria. Um, and, be, and so it was to be able to categorize that material and make it readily accessible to um, organizations interested in working with this population. So very quickly, the overview of the toolkit, it's made up of around 50 resources from about 20 different organizations around the world in about eight different languages. Um, and you see it's developed for these, the following countries, global use, Burkina, DRC, India, mostly Sub-Saharan Africa. So South Asia, you're underrepresented here. We need to get more of your resources um, that have been developed in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, the various countries that are also working on this population. Um, so it's organized in two ways. One is essential knowledge and evidence that uh, program and intervention designers and advocacy folks can use to develop programs, to develop advocacy campaigns, to do advocacy with donors and with key stakeholders. Okay, thank you. I don't know, it's way too technological. Oh, whoo, look at that. And then the other aspect of it, it's organized as training resources and tools and job aids that program implementers, practical tools that program implementers can use for capacity building, quality improvement, um, really useful frontline workers and healthcare providers. And this, so um, very quickly, this is just the beginning. We plan to do an annual review of this toolkit. We plan to continue to do annual searches as new materials are developed and add this to the toolkit. Um, and please do share your resources and your, um, your activities and, and your program experiences related to first-time parents and young married women um, so we can add them to the toolkit and continue to keep this alive and um, a living document. Um, I brought a couple of iPads, which I've not been able to pull up the website on because of challenges around the internet. So uh, tomorrow and, and Thursday, we will have those um, iPads posted in the room here. So when you have some time during the breaks, you might want to get online and look at that toolkit. Um, and please share your resources with us. And then lastly, um, I'd like to reintroduce you to Ag Angana Prasad, who has so much more than just our bright and enthusiastic MC. Um, and I'm going to wrap up the rest of the reception with us um, and then excuse us all for drinks and, and snacks. Um, but I'm going to uh, has quite an impressive um, background. She has a master's degree in gender studies. She's also a certified life skills trainer. And during her graduation, she was an active member of the street theater circuit of, universe, of the University of... Here we go, trying to find the mouse again. Honestly, this computer does not want to cooperate with me. Tech. <laughs> Once again, I can't find the mouse. I don't know where it goes. Honestly, I'm, I'm a relatively well-educated person. <laughs> I'm never doing this again, by the way. I don't know where the mouse goes. <laughs> just goes into some sort of mouse, mouse bat cave, I suppose. Okay. So now I just want to go to the end of the presentation. I'm going to come and introduce yourself. <laughs> I give up. She's got a great background and a great set of skills. And I think she wants to talk to you a little bit more about the work that she does with her organization, Project Kel. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Yay. Um, I am one of the senior core team members of this organization called Project Kale. Uh, Kale is about to turn six 
uh, in another three months, and I'll turn six in Project Kale after six months. So I joined Project Kale when it was three months old, so I've practically been there from the beginning, and uh, it's a young team. I'm the oldest member in my team. Everyone else is younger than me. And uh, we're a very, very young team and extremely enthusiastic, and our curriculum is forever evolving because we believe nothing's ever perfect, and every learning from the ground, every experience needs to be given its due in the curriculum that we uh, take to people. Anyway, so we won't be talking now. Uh, I would request all of you to get away from your chairs, please. You're not sitting for the next 15 minutes, for sure. <laughs> so everyone, please stand up. And I will stay true to the name of my organization, and what we do next is going to be Kale Based. Uh, we will do a little action song, which we had learned in a workshop done by this other organization called Play for Peace. And I'll tell you exactly how we've started using this particular action song and similar songs uh, to have a lot of gender-based discussions. Um, it's mostly in Hindi. Actually, it's entirely in Hindi. Uh, lyrics is very simple. It's about a crow that keeps drinking tea. Okay? Uh, you have to repeat what I'm doing. Physical actions as well as repeat the words. Okay? Um, can everyone see me? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Okay. Daya Haat. Yeah. So Daya Haat is right hand. Daya Haat. Kya tumne kabhi koi kawa dekha hai? Jo har dam chai pita hai. Kawa salam. Kawa sabdhan. कौआ अपनी जगह पे तीन बार उठक बैठक कर वन सिटन ये सिटन स्टैंड अप टू सिटन इन स्टैंड अप थ्री सिटन इन स्टैंड अप यस दाया हाथ बाया हाथ क्या तुमने कभी कोई कौआ देखा है जो हर दम चाय पीता है कौआ सलाम कौआ सावधान कौआ बगल वाले को गुदगुदी कर सो आई वांट एवरीवन टिकलिंग ईच लाइक एवरीवन शुड बी टिकलिंग एवरीवन अराउंड यू ओके दया हाथ बाया हाथ menstrual hygiene <laughs> okay pet me dard hai you have to repeat after me and louder i'll move away from the mic pet me dard hai i mahawari so mahawari means periods we'll repeat it pet me dard hai i mahawari strong rahenge घंटे में बदलेंगे पैक महावारी का कपड़ा धूप में नहीं सुखाते गर्ल आर यू मैड ख्याल रखेंगे नहीं करेंगे शर्म खून है ये साफ न रखना कोई भरम ओके okay, so, so
<laughs> so this is a little action song which says that you need to eat green vegetables and leaf and stay uh, leafy vegetables. So you say stay strong and uh, you have to change your disposable pads in every six hours. If you're using a uh, cloth piece, then you need to sun dry it, otherwise it's not hygienic. And how you do not need to believe that it's dirty blood that is coming out of your system. So this is, again, one power-packed action song that we had designed for the kids in UP, uh, in the US. Okay. In this round, you're actually not supposed to sit. And I'm serious about this. So this is going to be the last thing. What we'll do is, this is entirely designed to network. We are going to follow a speed dating format. So I'm going to uh, say some random uh, requirements. Based on that requirement, you will have to talk to people around you, figure out if that person matches that requirement, and then you're free to talk anything that you want to based on the topic of the meeting here. So anything to do with SR, HR funding and programming and implementation, anything that you want. But you will have only 40 seconds with that person. That means you get to speak for 20 seconds, your partner gets to speak for 20 seconds, and then I'm going to... Um, make some sound like woo woo and you have to change your partner. The idea is that you reach out to as many people as you can and uh, by the end of it, uh, I'm assuming you would have interacted with most people in the room and then you can take your conversations outside and uh, do it over coffee and whatever else is waiting for us. Okay, so the first statement is you have to find a partner who has been to the washroom at least twice since morning? So start moving around and find someone. We're asking embarrassing questions. We have to get out of our mold. <laughs> Break the mold is one of the agenda for today. Figure out a person, talk to that person. That person should have visited the washroom at least twice since morning. You have 40 seconds of talk time. <laughs> Who's got a similar length of hair as you? You have to move around and find a partner who's got similar length of hair. I see people not changing partners. This is your time to talk to as many people possible. So now we are going to do something based on find a partner who does not like milk at all. <laughs> huh, so that's why you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to talk to as many people as possible. person hosting the reception, there has been a very special request. 
I want you all to know it was not something that I intended to do, but this is on a request. I would request uh, everyone who is representing a funding agency to kindly shift to this side of the room. <laughs> and organizations in need of funding or mostly involved with implementation to shift to this side of the room. So funding agencies, that side, or organizations that have the capacity to give out funds, that side. Organizations in need of funds, this side. Since we do not have a very, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Uh -huh. And uh, since we have just two people on the other side, whoever reaches there first gets to talk. Okay, for the others, you all can uh, take your conversations forward over tea and snacks are served. Kate, thank you.